Hi guys! If you saw my last favourites video, um, I had a quick peek at a loaded Halloween bag that I had made for Serena B's uh, Secret Reaper swap. And a few people asked to see a tutorial of how I made the loaded bag. So, um, super easy. I followed another tutorial that I found on YouTube, so I will link that down below. Um, but this was uh, a super easy thing to put together, so I'm going to quickly show you how I made one. And make another one using this uh, Amy Tangerine A Slice of Life line. Um, past Diane must have known that eventually I would find a really pretty colourful line like this to use for this. Uh, because she bought this really pretty yellow gift bag and hasn't used it since. <laughs> so I'm going to use this one today. I thought it coordinated really nicely with the colours in this line. And um, let's just quickly get started because it is really simple. The first thing I'm going to do because it's super annoying me is remove this tag off the back because I don't need that. Uh, and this is just like a regular gift bag but it is folded flat how it comes and um, I've seen loaded bags before where they sort of glue them, stitch them down the sides here. The thing I liked about this tutorial is that we're only going to attach um, this front flap to the front piece of the bag so you've still got a lot of space in the bag to be able to fit a lot of goodies in there which I guess is the point of a loaded bag. So um, the easiest way it's just a stapler I'm using my tiny attacher because it only has this really thin piece so it's really easy to get in there so we're just going to staple the front flap to the front piece of the bag so ignore this piece at the back here and just put your stapler arm in there and if you can see I'm stapling really close to the edge of the bag because I want as much space in there as possible. Uh, and you don't need like a million staples. I um, can fit three, so I fit three on there and I'm going to repeat that on the other side. And my tiny attacher just fits through. That's quite a fat sort of bag. It just fits through it. Uh, I might grab some pliers just to squeeze these shut, but um, that's it. So now you've got your front pocket in here. Oh, no. Tiny attacher is not going to work. Okay, the bag's a bit thick. I'm going to get my regular stapler. Okay, so I did eventually get that stapled. I needed to go and find a heavy duty stapler. This side of the bag has one extra piece because that's where it's glued. So, um, Maybe pick a bag that's not as uh, luxe, not as thick paper, or just use a heavy duty stapler like I did. Eventually I've got it all stapled, and so like I was saying, this is your little front flap, front pocket in the front, and then you've still got the whole bag to fill up with goodies. That's essentially it, and then you can decorate it however you want to. Um, I am just going to create the same sort of front to my bag that I did last time, which was a little shaker pocket with some sort of embellishment on here. So I think I will I'll do that here now. I've got all of these pretty papers, and I think I want to make like a, a pinwheel, I think. So I'm going to use that one's very pretty and something for the shaker I love pink and orange I'm gonna do this one here and so to create a little shaker um, it's gonna cover up all of this nasty stuff here so we just need to measure out our piece of paper And it just pays to make sure. I'm going to leave just a tiny little edge of the yellow. And then can trim that down. And 
and that gives me the base for my little shaker pocket and so what I'm gonna do I can't do it on the camera with you but I've got this roll of chul I just grabbed that from a local craft store it was actually it's kind of a sparkly one so it was in the Christmas section and it won't fit that way so I'm gonna trim off a piece that's a little bit larger than my base paper I always find it easier to work larger with the tool and then trim it down later. So I'm going to take that over to my sewing machine and I'm going to stitch around three sides and before I close up the fourth side I'm going to add a few sequins in. I've made just a little quick sequin mix that I thought matched this uh, line really well. So I'm going to fill it with sequins, well not fill it, hopefully not too many. There's a delicate balance between too many and not enough. If you have too many um, it's going to be really hard for the tool to close because it's all puckered and big. Uh, and if you have enough, don't have enough, it looks a bit stingy. So back in one second. And so I just stitched around that a couple of times and as is my usual tendency I think I've probably got a few too many sequins in there but um it's a little bit bulgy but I'm gonna work with it because it's very pretty uh, and so now I just have to trim off the chill around the outside And then you can just adhere that onto the front pocket of your bag. Um, probably something heavy duty to glue this on because uh, it's going to get a lot of wear and tear this pocket. And now to make the sort of decoration for my bag, I think I'm going to create kind of a medallion-y sort of thing. Um, I used a tutorial from I Am Absolutely Alice uh, to do my last one, and I'm going to do something similar, except I'm going to uh, create a sort of pinwheel, I think, for the back instead of just um, an award shape. So uh, let me zoom in a little bit. So the way I work out the size for my pinwheel is I think I want it about, about three inches in diameter. So I'm going to cut two strips at one and a half inches. And I just have obviously a six inch paper. If you have a 12 inch um, piece of paper, you'll only need to cut one strip. The reason I'm cutting two is because I'm going to need 12 inches of one and a half inch strip and I've only got a six inch paper so I'm going to join them. And then using a scoreboard I'm going to score both of these strips every quarter inch. And then once you have scored them, you can go ahead and fold them into an accordion fold. I always fold the first piece down and then accordion the whole way along, both strips. This does take a tiny bit of time. And then if you've got your 12 inch strip, then that's all you need to do from here. If you've got the two six inch one, ah, uh, they're eight inches, sorry, they're like I do. I'm gonna have to join these two here and I'm just gonna use some tape to do that. And then you're going to do the exact same thing, whether you've got the 12 inch or now the 8 inch, you just want to join the other end together so you have a complete circle of pleated paper. And 
and then the next part just kind of takes a little bit of sort of fiddling and just what you want to be able to do is push the top of your circle down and the bottom out so that's how you get your pinwheel and it just helps if you just play with that a little bit and get it into semi shape it's going to want to sprawling back up again but that's fine and then the next step is going to require a hot glue gun well certainly you can do it with wet uh, like liquid adhesive um, you will just need to hold it until it dries. Uh, I prefer the hot glue gun because it's far more immediate um, and I don't have to wait so long for it to dry. Either way, whatever adhesive that you're using, you want to run adhesive all around the top of your circle here. And then before it dries or cools, if you're using the hot, uh, hot glue gun, you want to do that same thing again and push the top down and together until your glue is dry. Now if you're using the hot glue gun, when you push this down like this, the glue is going to like squeeze out the top and bottom. So either work on a craft mat or like a non-adhesive surface and be careful not to glue your fingers to the top here. Once the glue cools down a little bit, I kind of just smush it down with my finger um, just so that you get a bit more of a flat surface on the top. But only once the glue cools, you do not want to burn yourself with the hot glue gun. I've done that before too, and it is incredibly painful. And then once that's all cool, you've got your little pinwheel. Now I think because uh, the pocket on this bag is quite shallow, uh, I'm going to put the pinwheel sort of a bit higher up so that it just uh, gives a bit more height to the decoration. Obviously you can tuck a bunch of stuff into the front pocket um, anyway, but I'm going to just make sure that my uh, pinwheel, my, well my embellishment cluster goes above the top of the pocket just to give it a little bit of height when the bag's actually empty. So I'm just going to, this is going to be noisy, I'm going to shake all of the sequins down onto sort of this side of it so that I can work up here um, without worrying about gluing any of my little sequins together. I think under my pinwheel I'm going to put a paper ruffle, I think, um, a la Paper Buttons Love, Nyella, um, her and Alice do this all the time and um, I've been using it too and I love it so I'm going to pick, I think this black paper will be nice and I'm just going to trim, uh, let's use the trimmer so I can tell you how wide it is. The trimmer piece it's about one and three quarters you can make that however wide you want and I think I'm even going to leave the little branding strip piece on at the end now I just want to come in a little bit and create an accordion fold it doesn't have to be too precise in fact probably the less precise the better and then I'm going to create a second one And then when I trim a little V out of this end, that's going to be one end of my little ruffle, which I'm going to put out here, I think. So I'm going to flip this over and do my a second ruffle uh, accordion fold here. Just make sure it's roughly in the right place. Doesn't matter if it's not, because you can easily refold it. And then I'm going to trim a V out of this end as well. 
and to secure that all down I'm going to stitch that with my sewing machine. So that's my little paper ruffle. I've picked the worst colour paper to show you because it's black but that's the first little ruffle there and then those three down there. You can trim the threads off if you want. I'm going to leave them for just a little bit more texture. And then I'm going to use my hot glue gun again to add a bit of hot glue to the back of my pinwheel and attach that to the ruffle. And then I'm going to use the hot glue to attach the ruffle onto the front of my pocket. Being really careful not to glue anything up here. I'm only want to go glue onto the panel that we created. And while that's heating up, I had an idea actually before I glue all of this down. There were some things in the stationery pack. Like this really cute tag or an envelope. I think the tag might work. that's going to look really cute. So I'm just going to glue a little tag on behind it just again to give it a little bit of extra height. Now I can shake all the sequins back down so they're nicely distributed. And we got a fun sequin shaker front with our little embellishment and our pocket is still totally functional for putting all sorts of goodies back there. Now I just want to embellish my little pinwheel here um, and I'm going to pull out my um, cuddle bug. Just want to pick a die. I don't want one that's too big because I do want to be able to see the pinwheel I've made. I think that one's cute. And actually I might use that same paper there just to pull it back up to the top. And the other thing I might add is one of these hearts. And I'm thinking the little yellow one will be cute. I'm just gonna grab a bit of foam for that. Like I say, I'm no expert at these, but I think like the more dimension you can get on them, just the more fun they look. So I think I'm also going to layer another pattern under here. The black and white one will be fun. And I've got another tiny little circle die. Right, and now I'm going to glue this all on with my hot glue again, I think. And I might add a couple of puffy stickers. I might also add like a wee sentiment on here.
Okay, so my camera cut out, but um, what I was saying was that I want to balance this huge element down here by adding something up to the top corner. I know I'll probably end up tucking things into this pocket, which will fill it up anyway, um, but I still want to add just a little just a little tassel up here. So this is just a tassel I made myself with a tassel maker and some thread. Um, and I've attached an eyelet up here and that's how I'm going to hang my little tassel. And I might, I might throw a tiny puffy sticker up there as well maybe. And that's how easy it is to create a loaded bag. And then you can just go ahead and fill up this bag full of goodies. Uh, I think I am going to make a few little embellishments and probably fill it full of chocolate and coffee and candy and all sorts of good things. Uh, so if you want to win this bag, because I clearly don't need another one, um, I'll leave a link down below and you can go in the drawer to win this beauty if you'd like it. So thank you for watching. Let me know if you've got any questions because I know um, it was a little bit of a garbled mess. But um, I will see you again really soon. Bye guys.